Hi everyone, it's Toby. Thank you for joining me. Today we're doing one of my absolute favourite things, a quick sketch. So we're going to use just one pen, one brush and a handful of colours and to dial like magic we're going to produce something really quick, really lovely, really fun. A quick sketch doesn't mean hurrying, it means simplifying, making decisions and making the scene your own. Now if that sounds like your kind of fun, you're in the right place and let's get to it. Also, I have released a Skillshare class on exactly this subject. So if you want to follow the link in the comment and in the description below, you will find that Skillshare class. There are 50 free places for my YouTube viewers. So jump on in there, totally free, no questions asked. And you'll find a much longer, more in-depth tutorial about quick sketching and all that quick sketching entails. So here we go. All we're using for our quick sketching process, a size 10 brush, a fine fountain pen with some waterproof ink and a piece of watercolour uh, paper which is um, slightly textured cold pressed. got my normal colours and everything here is listed on my website urbansketch.co.uk forward slash supply so you can look at everything I've got sat in front of you and what we're going to do we're going to really quickly find our scene. Now the first step is like I said is to find our scene and actually a really helpful thing can be to use if you've got a couple of pens or anything lying around like that you can start finding the key shapes in your scene. So I can find the perspective of this big building um, and I can sort of decide where it's going to sit on my page and once I've got that I could if I want I could find some other bits and bobs and be like oh, this is where these trees are going maybe I actually want to make it smaller and I can just visualize what things are going to look like just with a really simple process like this and you could use anything for that if you're out and about you could use some twigs some grass it's just about having a way to literally visualize what's going on once we've done that we can just go for it and the first thing we're doing as we find our scene is finding the key shapes so what do i mean by that well look, if we start with that building we were just finding i'm going to pop it slightly off the center of our page and basically we're going, well, what's the key shape here? Well, it's a basically giant rectangle, isn't it? In that rectangle, towards the middle, we've got this funny little building, like perched on top. And then it comes down. I'm slightly exaggerating this perspective just a little bit. And then along here, we've got a sort of bridge or something across some water. Now, this building is actually a mill. This is Jordan's Mill, and they're a maker of sort of very nice posh um, cereals in the UK. Uh, so this is actually a mill, this is where all the flour and things used to go in and out. That's why there's funny doors going halfway up it. But we don't need to know that, we can just do everything based on the simple shape. I'm just going to go off to the edge and find these lovely little bushes and things like that. And then come back and finish off the shape of this bridge or this walkway, whatever we're calling it. And in doing so, find some of these textures down below. We've got all these reeds and things. And there we go. We can be really rough and abstract with those. We can come back back to the shapes and find them again. There's also a lovely little tree going up here. The tree can be a, a shape or a bush can be a shape. And then we've got the li line of water. And everything is just being simplified into rectangle, rectangle, circle. Really, really simple stuff. And if we're doing quick sketching, that's what we're after. We're after simple things. It might look complicated because when we finish, we've built up and made lots of decisions, but the actual process of doing it is deceptively simple. More shapes back here, just finding the sort of perspective of the building again, finding the building in the back. And here we go. We're almost there with the big shapes, aren't we? And we don't need to know again, I don't know what this sort of circle is, but I can see it. So I can put it in, I can see that there is a circle there. Some shapes we can identify, we can see these little chimneys at the back, but it's still important just to treat them as shapes, because if we start trying to sketch too much detail too early, well, we'll get stuck, we'll get stuck in that detail, when in fact, what we're after are simple shapes. But now, what have I done? Well, we've got the key bits, and I'm starting now to do the smaller shapes in our scene. So, for example, let's just start back up here at the top. We can resolve this funny little, don't even know what to call it. It's like an outhouse, but it's a floating outhouse. Then we can start finding the, the windows. Now, because I'm me, I'm going to connect a lot of these windows. 
But um, this is a personal stylistic thing. I just enjoy connecting things with continuous lines. So, you know, it for me, it makes a really great way to do quick and simple sketches. And it just instantly fills this building with ink, makes it look interesting, it gets rid of that white paper, which can be so scary. It's also not right. It's definitely wrong. And actually, I like that. I like that I'm doing things which are my version of the scene. Move along. And there we go. We've basically got all the windows in. A couple on the roof could be fun. And as we're doing this, we're already thinking about how the colour is going to apply. So I'm finding these green shapes, which are going to contrast some of these other shapes. So I'm finding more of these greens to balance out the left and the right. I've also put a bit of emphasis on these big red doors, which are going to balance out some of the red of this as well. And then maybe we can just put in some of these people, people, simple shapes. So because they're behind a, a barrier, these people could just be a circle and a triangle. And that again, that's an opportunity for us to add some punchy colour. Now, as we come around, we're almost, probably almost done really. I might just add a few more people just to get the, the feeling of how full this place was when I was there. Um, apologies if you can hear lots of airplanes and car noises. It's a very hot day at the moment, so I've got my um, my window open so that I can, well, basically so that I can breathe because it's so warm at the moment. Um, and there we go. I'm actually going to call that that done. Now you'll notice that I've pulled the building down a long way. Um, and it's probably down a bit further than I intended actually, but I did intend for it to be low so I could open up the sky. And that's another really wonderful way of making things simple. Because when we have big skyscapes, when we have big sort of green areas, what can happen is in step two, where we add our watercolours, what we're about to do now, well, the watercolours will paint themselves. They can create amazing textures for these natural areas. So what I'm doing first, my size 10 brush on this big piece of paper, that's all we need, one brush. I'm filling it with a lot of water. And now I'm going to find just a few blues, so some cobalt blue. That can gently look, paint itself. See how the blue is spread all the way up the page, yet my brush has only touched it in a couple of places. And this is the power of watercolours. It's their, their sort of unique aspect is how much they are willing to just work for you. I've recently added a little bit of cobalt turquoise into my um, palette. That's not a very realistic sky colour, but it is going to add a punch of... Sort of light, well, turquoise in there, a bit of brightness. And if we move it and blend it a little bit, well, then you know what, it's going to end up feeling pretty nice. Also, we've got these clouds, which have got more of a sort of murky tone in them. So another blue, three blues all in one painting. We're going to get some Mayan blue, which also has a sort of slightly turquoisey feel, slightly, perhaps even slightly green feel. Um, but I'm hoping it will just give us that idea that it's not a a crystal clear sky, is it? It's got lots of those sort of British summertime clouds in it as well. And there we go. So now, hopefully you can see that our, although I put the building rather low, it's now balanced out. The top is sort of weighed down by all that lovely watercolour. Coming down, we need to make some decisions about negative space. Well, I'm going to leave at least this side, this very bright side of the building, blank. I'm not going to stick rigidly to this very dark shadow that we've got. Instead, I'm going to get some Crackton Sienna and wash that down the front of my building. I'm going to also get some red Scarlet Lake and already just get these lovely doors which are going up. And then I'm going to come down even further. This is some indigo, a little bit of indigo, nice dark colour. And I'm going to start getting into the shadow of the bridge before coming back to the reflections of the water. And again, this is my version. And that's what's really key in these kind of really quick sketching processes. We can't, we can't possibly do something for photorealistic. What we can do is make decisions and make a scene our own very quickly. And that's what I'm trying to do today. So this, this is too bright. This isn't totally realistic. I've changed the shadow. All of these things are decisions I'm making to make this scene simpler to sketch, but also to make it mine, make it more interesting. I'm going to just 
like I said, this red over here, this house can balance out the reds of these doors. Maybe we just want a little bit more shadow in a couple of places over here, for example, a bit more in the building. Just gently, gently increasing it. I'm going to try some textures as well. I've got some lunar black. Now that can create some lovely textures. If I just drop it in, it will wash around and move around. A little bit of lunar earth to do basically the same thing, but in our building this time to get these lovely sort of granular textures. Now, what are we missing? Well, I'm actually want to make this building richer. So even more quinactone sienna. And notice how I'm being not, I hope not rushing, but being quick, being agile, moving around, making quick decisions and just seeing what happens. I don't want to rush because rushing is where you create a mess and you, you didn't think about what you're doing, but moving quickly and just experimenting. Yeah, that's okay. And that, that for me is how we get really fun, really interesting pictures with our lovely watercolors. Just joining up a couple of bits. Again, the more we join things up, the more complexity it takes on um, in terms of how it looks, but also the simpler it is to do. And with that, I think actually, I'm gonna call this done. This is step two done. So now I just need this to dry and we can go on to our final step, um, which is where we'll just add some finishing touches. That might be bold colors, it might be bold ink work, it might be adding more details, anything goes. But what we need to happen is for this to have dried so that we can see what changes we need to make. Okay, so we're not perfectly dry, but in most places we're touch dry. There's a few places like here which are wet. That's fine. We'll we'll make do in our quick process and we'll move on and just see what happens. What I want to do now, there's two things I think need doing with the watercolours. Firstly, I just want a little bit more contrast. So these windows, for example, we can make dark. We can give that kind of suggestion of something dark and eerie going on inside. Look, where it's wet, the colours will blend, but again, that's fine. Like I said before, we'll just go for it, we'll make do, we'll see what happens. These reds, again, we can increase the contrast, the saturation of these reds by applying a second layer. And layers in watercolour are, of course, key, because layers are what really um, allow watercolours to build up that tone. A bit more of our indigo in these windows here. Just a few touches and in here. What we might even want to do is just contrast that indigo, touch in some cobalt, maybe a bit of cobalt turquoise into a couple of these windows. So they take on not just an eerie feel, but also a, an element of life. Down below, a bit more texture perhaps, a bit more emphasis of these sort of deeper textures and tones in the in the, uh, the the river. Remembering that we said it was a bit too bright before, well, now it's not too bright, It's it's got a a different feel to it just for a few simple touches coming up maybe maybe we could just do the same in our bridge we could just increase the contrast in our bridge now we've kind of separated out this this sky very loose this very warm building and this slightly darker foreground i didn't know how it was going to work but i made some quick decisions i had an idea in my head and just a willingness to experiment the last thing i think i want to try is some lovely green. So I've got a nice textural green here, green appetite genuine. And we'll just pick a few places to pop some of that green in. I don't want it everywhere, but I want it in enough places that it kind of shows us that there's lots of greenery, that it unifies some of this image. And maybe we could just touch in some light yellow as well, just to provide a slight sort of tonal contrast. Now with all that done, a few little ink touches, I'm going to flatten some of these other sort of bits of greenery, which aren't green, with some simple hatching. And that kind of just separates them out from being a part of the scene to, to being something else. And lastly, just bring our focal point, this lovely building, bring it back into this sort of sharp relief, if you like, by providing it a much 
thicker outline. You can see where it's not dry, so my ink has gone up. Now, you might hate that, you might love that. For me, I actually quite like it, so I'm going to leave it. But if I didn't like it, while the ink is still wet, even though this is permanent ink, while the ink is still wet, I could easily go back in with my brush and just lift it out. And there we go. And I always say, this is the last thing I'm going to do, and then I always do something different. These people I talked about as being potential touches of colour. There's a lot of colour going on though. So instead of colour, I'm going to make them touches of contrast. So I'm going to use my pen and really make them dark. And now they'll stand out, but they won't make it too busy. So now we have these sort of people all over our scene, but we haven't sort of made the scene really horrendously busy. We've not overdone things, overfilled things. And there we go. Now, am I really done? I think a couple more of these people and I really am done. So there we go. Don't forget to sign your work. And then when it's all done, come join me in the next video. I've got a couple more quick and easy sketching videos linked in the comment and description below. And of course, if you enjoy my style, this loose style of painting, of sketching, find me on www.sketchloose.co.uk where I have some really in-depth courses, including one free 10-day course, which covers all of these little tips and tricks that you need to get started and feel great. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.